She developed her lifelong love for designs as a young girl thanks to her grandmother who was a wall and floor painter. She was born in Makabu Helen Sibiri in Marapiani and in 2005 she was awarded the Order of Ikamanga in silver and she is the acclaimed visual artist that Dimisidi Media and I put under the spotlight in our weekly cultural icon spot. Dimamzo, thank you so very much for making the time to talk to Lebo and I. Welcome to Morning Live. Thank you too. So, speak to me about the first time you realized that there's such a thing as art. Well, I was working as a domestic worker, but I didn't know about art. All I knew is to work. I was taught that my work should communicate. My work should meet the world. My work should be appreciated by every house I get into and being received. That was my grandmother when she grew me up and she was pushing work. I didn't know if it was called art. In school, I was decorating books for other children and myself. And at home, I used to work with her and everything. But sometimes I would like to jump her, to do better than her. And she would demolish everything and say, you didn't do it well. I must do it. So I had to watch her and say, but if she says it's not nice, she does it well, what do I do? So when she does anything, I would lie down behind her and watch her fingers. And then seeing what she's doing with her fingers, I would, she created a courtyard for me, for me to work at the courtyard because I was missing everything on her, on her side. So with that courtyard, I had to practice all the works that she does. And I always like to surprise her. So we were attending school with Ndebele people. And we would find this different uh, floors, cows design and, and uh, mural design. And I, I wanted to introduce it to my grandmother. But she disagreed with that design. After she went away, I designed the whole floor and the whole walls because it's a new design. She must be very excited when she comes. And she came and demolished everything and said, you can't do like this. Look, I can't even see my, 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 my background, my, my, my underground, because my underground must come shining. And that one closes everything. Then I was learning in that way. Why does she say the cow dung closes everything? with developed designs. So I had to look out. So I learned slowly until I wanted to take it out, to take over from her. Mama, take us back to your first exhibition when your work was in a proper exhibition. Well, my exhibition, my first exhibition was, the first one was the Zoo Lake Park. From the storytelling from the grandparents after staying with my grandmother, um, the the um, I had to go and learn the pots and sculptors for me to enter in town. So they were mixed exhibition, uh, pots, sculptures, and paintings. That was the first June, nineteen eighty-six. Mama, why is it that figures, especially human beings, are your favorite subjects when it comes to your art? What is it that gets you about displaying and documenting people? As I said before, my grandmother taught me to communicate. Then that communication pushed me to love people, to be able to meet people in those human beings. But I never could find those people until I received this white woman who I worked for and learned about art from her. And she gave me that love. The whole family gave me that love and gave my grandmother that love, the same love that I wanted it. They even went to visit my grandmother. The, the love that we should have must come back. And that's why I make this type of human figures, different faces, mm -hmm. because I meet you, I don't know exactly inside you. Yes. So that's how the faces comes differently. So one is looking there, there's no one who's capturing their own life. 
And that's why the, 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 the figures are tend to look differently. Let's talk about the people that have been very instrumental in creating the Helen that is sitting here today. Who are some of the other people that have contributed positively to the artist and the award-winning visual artist that's sitting with us today? Well, I remember after my grandmother, I happened to know Lucky Sibia. And I brought my work to him once, and he looked at it. Twice, he looked at it. And the third time, he says, Hey, man, you're doing the same thing. You don't change. You <laughs> and he shut it. He was a very uh, angry man. Because I love those who are angry. I don't like people who polish me, who thinks they're so good. And I realized that this man is going to help me to grow my work. He knows that my work is not growing. So I must hold his arm. So I did that. Mama, you've um, collected quite a number of titles and awards since the beginning of your career. And now that you sit here and you look back at your blossoming career, which one would you say has been the highlight of your life? I think the one that I could say it's a highlight on my life is the scholarship into America. That had given me as an energy and the whole experiences and belief. Traveling to America, receiving that, um, well, it was the World Wild Award, which was um, the, uh, the Etna Malay colony. Uh, um, they did this award because they wanted to help the artists in America. And that had helped me much more than the American. Helen Makawusibidi, thank you very much for your time. Morning Life really does appreciate this interview with you. Well, I thank you so much that you came and interviewed me. She was named Stena Bengyang Artist of the Year for Visual Arts in 1989, and she is the cultural icon for this weekend.